the gospel reading that we heard today concerning Zacchaeus is one that has a special meaning in my heart. It was actually this gospel reading that I spoke about at the very first Bible study that I ever did. I did it with a group of inner city Greek Bostonian teenagers. And after the Bible study, I asked them what they learned. And they looked at me and they said, a sycamore tree won't necessarily make you sick. I pray you get a little more from this sermon than they did from that first Bible study. The question I would like to begin with is do we see God? Do we see His providence in our life? Do we see His mercy in our hearts? Do we recognize Him face of our neighbor. If we do not, and most of the time we probably do not, we can learn from Zacchaeus. We can follow his example that we too might hear the words that were spoken to him. Today salvation has come to your house. What was it that Zacchaeus did? But before we even speak of what he did, we have to acknowledge and recognize that like Zacchaeus, we are little. We're small. Unable to reach up to the heavens. Unable to see Christ on our own merit, on our own strength if we don't begin with that understanding that we are little, that apart from God we are dust, we will not receive His grace. But because of our smallness, our sinfulness, it's necessary for us to do as Zacchaeus did and to climb a tree to climb a tree, to do that which will lift us above our worldly concerns and our passions, that will help change our perspective that we might see Christ. It's not just sycamore trees that we can climb. There's so many. We have innumerable examples throughout the scriptures throughout the lives of the saints. But I'll turn just briefly to the Old Testament. Abraham, Abraham saw God. What was the tree that he climbed? It was hospitality. It was sharing his table with strangers. And as is proclaimed in this church, God himself sat at table with him. King David, the great prophet and king, is another. The tree that he climbed was the tree of repentance and humility. A day should not go by without us reciting a psalm or at least a portion of a psalm. The prophet Elias or Elijah Love silence. And that practice of stillness, he too beheld God. The king, Josiah, through his study of the teachings and commandments of the Lord, and more importantly, through his struggle to obey them, he too encountered God. There are so many trees for us to climb Fasting, prayer, the study of scriptures, acts of charity, so many. Our church has a great forest of trees. We can pick any one. 
Though you may say to me, Father, we fast, but we don't see him. We study the scriptures, but we don't see him. We pray, but we don't see him. Our hearts, our houses still feel empty. Because you're climbing the easy trees. Or you're not climbing high enough. At a camp I was working at once, they had a climbing wall. And I was helping the kids so that they wouldn't fall. I remember this, this one young girl, she's climbing, she's reaching for the stones, she's doing everything that she can. I'm standing behind her, she, she's afraid to look down. She keeps nervously saying, Micah, are you there, are you there? Catch me if I fall. Don't worry, don't worry. Then she looks at, or she, she still looking up, says, am I almost to the top? I think she was maybe two feet off the ground. The problem, my friends, perhaps is not that we aren't trying to climb a tree, but we're not climbing high enough. Climbing a tree would be difficult, not easy. We climb trees and it's easy. We're missing something. Once Early in my life as an Orthodox Christian, I bragged to my spiritual father, never a good thing to do. I said, Father, this Lent, not a piece of meat, not a piece of dairy touched my lips. What can I do this year to improve on it? Is there anything? I don't know if I was quite so vain when I put it. But he looks at me and is heavy Greek accent, he says, was there ever a time in the 40 days that you weren't hungry? I said, well, no, Father. I, I thought he was worried about my health. I ate, I ate well, nutrition balanced. Maybe not enough protein, but I'm all right. I wasn't hungry. He says, you have not begun to fast. Abba Isaac, the Syrian, who's feast day we celebrate today, he goes so far as to say, whatever we do, whatever prayer we say, whatever vigil we embark on, if it does not involve labor and physical labor at that, he said you can account, you can account that as a miscarriage. It will bear no life. Let us climb trees, but not just easy ones. We have to struggle. This is the message of so many of the desert fathers, Ephraim and Isaac. But if we do, if we can give up a little bit of our comfort and our ease, Because again, remember, it's the violent who will receive the kingdom and will take it by force. This violence is not to be directed towards our neighbor, but to ourselves. We too will hear the voice of our Lord. He too will sit with us and eat with us. And here a great miracle occurs. When we have tasted of the love of the Lord when we have beheld his beauty and been shaped by his grace the tallest the most difficult trees will be easy for us we read the lives of the saints St. Macarios who would go seven days at a time without eating any food St. Stimian the stylite who climbed on top of a pillar about the martyrs whose flesh was rent and bodies were broken and yet it was easy for them because they had love for the Lord we get a taste of this in our own life when a loved one a child or a parent is sick or calls out to you 
There's no question. We rush immediately. It's easy for us to do because it's love that guides us and leads us and lifts us up. I'll conclude today's homily with a a short story, one that I'm sure I've said before and you're all probably familiar with, but one that is particularly meaningful to me. An example of a tree that can be climbed to behold the Lord. There was a man whose name was Simeon. And this Simeon was a very, very simple man. He lived in Greece. He worked in the fields. And every morning, he would get up early in the morning, earlier than he needed to. Because before he went to the field to work, he would stop by the church. And he would go to the icon of Christ. And in a simplicity, he would say, Good morning, my Christ. It's me, Simeon. And then he would go and work in the fields. On the way back, he would stop by the church. Good evening, my Christ. It's me, Simeon. This little thing. Maybe it doesn't seem like a big tree. Try getting up half an hour earlier every day for the rest of your life. It makes for a big tree. Near the end of his life, when he no longer worked in the fields, when it became difficult, he would still go, good morning, my Christ. Good evening, my Christ. Finally, the day came when he could no longer get to the church His passing was near. His family was gathered around. That morning, they didn't know if he would survive the day. They were letting him rest a little. And they heard a voice. They heard a voice coming from the room. Good morning, Simeon. It is your Christ, who is holy now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen.